All right, this is a uh, little more advanced problem that you see that relates to stoichiometry. And I want to do this, this type of problem because I, I see it a lot. You, you see these kind of problems all over the place if you do most types of chemistry. So the problem is um, 0 0.5 liters of a 0 0.2 molar hydrochloric acid solution is mixed with 0 0.5 liters of a 0 0.4 molar solution of AgNO3. A reaction occurs as shown, shown here. If the reaction goes to completion, what is the mass of AgCl produced? So we're looking for a mass of AgCl, and mass always means grams. So our answer has to be in grams of AgCl. This is a very common reaction. It's a precipitation reaction. You can tell because this is a solid that's made from two aqueous solutions. Um, with this problem, and it's really just, it's not that bad. It's really just basic stoichiometry. The hard part is getting to the moles. So whenever you're given moles, or whenever you're given amounts in liters and molar amounts, you, it's very easy to find the moles. And all you got to do is multiply the two numbers together, and that gives you amount in moles. But a couple things before we do that. Remember, moles is like a, a value that represents atoms. And it's a very common value. It's a value that's used all the time so that's just a very specific value we use moles just moles of it's just a, a specific amount so when you're given molar you gotta remember molar is totally different from moles that's it's used as moles but it's different because it's moles per liter so molar is like a, a value for solutions so if you want if you're given a molar amount and you want to go back to moles, which we do want to do here, and I'll show you why. All you have to do is get rid of liter, right? You just got to knock that liter out, and you get your moles. Well, to do that, you just multiply by your liters. And that will cancel out the liters, and you'll get moles. So that's why when you multiply these two values, so let's do that real quick. So, again, this is a molar solution. So this 0 0.20 is basically your moles per liter. That's units for this solution here, or for molar. And if you multiply by 0 0.5 liters, well, what happens? Liters cancel out and you get moles. So you can see this is just a 0 0.10 mole amount for hydrochloric acid. I think it's pretty important that you know why you multiply the two amounts. Because with chemistry and, and most sciences, units are really important. So we look at, we now know that we have a molar amount of hydrochloric acid. So they also give us a, a molar uh, and volume amount for the silver nitrate. So let's find out what, what that gives us, how many moles that gives us. And, you know, if you look at this type of problem and, you say, and you're not really sure what to do, you're really confused, just... You know, start working things out. And I, I always think of, when, with most types of problems, just go to moles. Like, if you're given grams, convert to moles. If you're given molar amounts and liter and volumes, convert to moles. Just go to moles, because moles are always a base unit. So let's find our moles of silver nitrate. That's just those two values multiplied. And you know, it's 0 0.20 moles of silver nitrate. All right, so we got two molar amounts here that we can start with. So what do we do with, the, with these amounts? Well, what this is basically saying is that you, in this reaction here, you have 0 0.10 moles of hydrochloric acid, and you have 0 0.20 moles of silver nitrate. That's, what it's, that's what's going on here, and this reaction occurs. So it turns out one of these reactants is a what we call a limiting reactant meaning it limits the whole reaction altogether how much you can produce how much AgCl which we're going to find can you produce it's limited it's limited by the smaller amount in this case it's 0.1 moles of hydrochloric acid um, there's more silver nitrate and it wants to be used up but we only have this much hydrochloric acid so we have to use this to figure out how many grams of silver nitrate we have we're going to use this amount here because again it's a limiting reactant it's going to limit the whole reaction 
So let's let's go with this guy here. Um, this is where the basic stoichiometry comes in. So first, you've got to convert this from moles of hydrochloric acid to moles of, of silver chloride. And that's really simple. Since we want to get rid of moles of hydrochloric acid, you'll want to put that on the bo bottom so it cancels out. And when I get moles of silver chloride. Now the reason it's just one to one here is because all of these coefficients are just one. So if this was two and they balanced us, they balanced this problem for us. Thankfully, that I would put a two here, but thankfully it's just one keeps it makes it really easy. So that's it. It's just one to one. So now you just converted from moles of hydrochloric acid to moles of silver chloride. Um, if you've seen in other places, sometimes they set it up like this, which is very, very common. Fix that. Um, this is the exact same thing. This is the exact same thing. Sometimes people like to set it this way. Sometimes people like to set it this way. Again, it's, it's all the exact same. I'm just doing it a little differently it's it's no big deal it's all the same so however you do it it's all good it's all the same stuff so this is our first step so when you do this first step here you're multiplying 0.1 times 1 and then divided by 1 that doesn't do anything now before we calculate all this out let's do the next step because now if we were to calculate this we'd have an answer that's in moles of silver chloride we want our answer to be in grams of silver chloride. So we got one more step we got to do. And again, we want grams of silver chloride. Now we want to get rid, at this point, we want to get rid of moles. So you want to put moles on the bottom. And we want to put grams on top. Now this gram value is just the molar mass of silver chloride. So that's just the mass of silver, which is 107.8. Uh, seven, and you can find that on the periodic table, plus the mass of chlorine, which is just uh, 35.45. When you add those two values up, you get 143.32. And that's just per one mole of AgCl. Now you know your final answer, since this is on the top at the end here, is going to be 100, or you know your final answer is going to be in grams of AgCl. And that's what they want the answer to be in. So now we can do our, all our calculations. And you can see this comes down to just 0 0.10 times 1 divided by 1 times 143.32 divided by 1. And that's really straightforward. And if you know your math, that's just one decimal place is moved to 14.33. And to keep it with the proper scientific notation or the proper units that we started with, since we only started with, uh, or excuse me, significant figures, since we only started with a certain amount of significant figures, we just keep it at 14. And that's the units for that are just grams of AgCl. That is your final answer.